Hi, my name is Mindy and I have lost over 125 pounds on Wegovy, Majero, semaglutide compound. I'm now back on Wegovy again. Over the last several months, I have been working on trying to improve my relationship with food. I have been taking some explorative forays into the world of intuitive eating with the help of my dietitian. And about four weeks ago, I decided to stop weighing myself. If you're somebody who's been feeling controlled by the scale, who has been struggling with the mood swings that are brought on by the highs and lows of the number on the scale, then definitely give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into what this experiment did to me. So as I said, about two months ago, I started reading my way through the intuitive eating book at the prompting of my registered dietitian. And if you've never read the intuitive eating book, I will link it down in the description below. I had a very skewed perspective of what intuitive eating was. I just thought intuitive eating was eating whatever you want, whenever you want, as much as you want. And I'm like, that sounds like exactly what I did to got me to, that got me to 365 pounds, but that's not actually true. <laughs> Intuitive eating is learning the role that traditional dieting plays in weight gain and how we're born with the ability to intuitively regulate our own appetite and cravings. And through experiences in our childhood, through experiences with people who model behavior, through food scarcity, through all sorts of things, it messes with our ability to regulate our own food intake. In my case, pretty much from childhood, all I remember was seeing my mom dieting, going from one diet to another, the cabbage diet, Amway, Herbalife, Atkins, whatever. It was trying to find the next thing that was going to be the answer to losing the weight. It was not like she ever told me I needed to lose weight. I didn't have that kind of a relationship with my mother by any means. It was just that was the behavior that I saw modeled for me from a very, very young age. And then throughout my adult life, I have been on diet after diet after diet. What intuitive eating teaches you is the psychology behind restriction and how our brains work when you tell your body that you can't have something. I'm realizing that in order to get the rest of this weight off and in order for me to successfully maintain that weight loss for the rest of my life without having to remain on these medications, I need to repair that relationship with food and get a solid understanding of how to function in a way that's healthy without being obsessive about everything because it only works for so long before I eventually rebel against it. I go through a binging episode, gain 15 pounds, and then I beat myself up for three to four months while I take off those 10 to 15 pounds. And then the cycle starts all over again. As I've been reading the intuitive eating book, there are certain things in it that, that definitely are eye roll worthy for me. They don't resonate with me. But there are other things that are literally like grabbing me by every fear that I have, like to think about letting go of the control on the food, the control on the calories, the control on all of that, and just trusting myself to know how much and what I need to eat is terrifying because I thought that if I allowed myself to just eat what I was craving whenever I felt like I was craving it, that that would just result in massive weight gain and, and I would balloon back up because, you know, in, in theory, that's what made me gain the weight in the first place. But really, if I think about it, I've spent the majority of my adult life dieting. I have. I've been on diets more than I've been off them and then and yet somehow I still managed to balloon up to 365 pounds. I don't know how it is that it never dawned on me that maybe the diets were the problem. As I've been reading further into the intuitive eating thing and I've learned more about the psychology of how our brains work with restriction, it makes more and more sense to me that I've been perpetuating the issue. The first four weeks that I started reading the book, I kind of took a, a small step with not tracking calories. After that four weeks, I kind of had a 
a revelation. I had a night where I went out to eat with Richard and the next morning I recorded this video. Good morning, my friends. I had kind of a win last night. Richard and I went to a local restaurant here in Austin called Pluckers. It's like a wing place and I stopped eating when I was full. I slowed down when I started to feel like maybe I had had enough. I took a few more bites and then I kind of pushed my plate away and then as I sat there I was like yeah you know what I've had enough even though when I started the meal like I felt like I was dying like I was like I need to eat all the food and honestly I ate way less than I thought I was going to and way less than really I had the calories to eat. I felt so good about that last night. Like I felt amazing about it. And I was so proud of myself and I took the leftovers home and you know, I'll either I'll eat them or I won't at a later time. But then this morning I decided to step on the scale and I was like, oh good, my weight stayed the same. I did so good. And I, I had a moment where I was like, why am I still using that as the measure of whether or not I did a good thing? why can't the good thing just be the good thing? Why am I still looking for the reassurance of the number on the scale? And that's prompting an experiment. I think I'm going to stop weighing myself for a little while. And that's kind of scary for me. If you're someone who's been a chronic where one of the things in the intuitive eating book is about taking the focus away from weight loss and moving it on to health, which I thought I had already done, but I, that, that kind of epiphany this morning made me realize I haven't moved away from that as much as I thought I did. So that day I decided I was going to stop weighing myself for four weeks and I told my dietitian about it and I was very excited about it and she was excited for me and I was like, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and my weight will do what it does and I'm going to try to honor my hunger and fullness and honor what I'm craving and stop telling myself that I can only eat certain things during certain times and that I, I can only eat the food that I'm eating out when I'm eating out and I can't take any of it home because all of those things even though they're healthy ideas, still reinforce in my brain that restriction cycle. And so I started doing things like, as soon as I started to feel like I was full, I would pack up my leftovers and take them home so that I didn't feel like I needed to finish eating it because if I didn't, then that delicious food was just gonna go to waste or I wasn't gonna get to finish it. Sometimes I would eat them later in the week. Sometimes I would give them to my dog. Sometimes I would throw them away. But I was feeling really good about the fact that I was starting to get better at listening to myself and I was starting to get better at trusting myself. As that four weeks went on, I felt pretty good about all of that. I felt like I was making strides to improve that relationship with food. Richard and I decided to go to an all-you-can-eat sushi buffet, and I definitely ate a little bit more than I normally would have, but I did not gorge myself to the point of bursting. I wasn't feeling uncomfortable when I left there, which, let me tell you, a buffet before this process definitely would have led to something like that. I didn't beat myself up about how much I ate afterwards. I just felt good. And then last Friday came time for me to weigh myself. And I recorded my reaction later that morning. And I want you guys to hear it here. I just finished weighing myself and taking my walk this morning. And... I'm trying to kind of sort through my feelings. The last several days leading up to me weighing myself for the first time in four weeks, there's been a lot of kind of anxiety. I don't know how else to put it. I've been going back and forth between what if I didn't lose anything? What if I gained it? I think not weighing myself has led me to kind of starting to scrutinize everything in some ways. In other ways, it's been a relief because I've just kind of been doing what I do and then whatever happens, happens. But I think it was whatever happens, happens until it's time to find out what happened. And now I'm kind of, I don't know, I mean, my initial thought process was disappointed because I was trying to focus on losing weight. Like I was, you know, doing my best to remain in a deficit, even though I wasn't, 
you know, meticulously counting calories. I was meal planning based on a certain calorie count and doing my best to really listen to my body and not overeat. And I mean, did I do it perfectly every time? No, but I don't felt, feel like I ever really like totally went off the rails either. But I think not having that check-in leaves me feeling like, what could I have done differently? I mean, I think that may have been the case no matter what the outcome was. One of the things that they talk about in intuitive eating is that you shouldn't be focusing on weight loss while you're learning to approach intuitive eating. And uh, first when I read that, I was like, well, that's stupid. I should be able to do both. And I understand why they say that now because it's it's almost impossible to focus on like listening to your body and trying to give your body what it's asking for when you have that thought in the back of your mind where everything is also being colored by your desire to lose weight. And I'm not saying that that means that I'm not going to focus on losing weight anymore. I just, I know that in order for me to be successful long term, I have to find a way to repair this relationship with food. And as I've been working with my dietitian, even leading up to this week where she knew I was going to be weighing myself for the first time in four weeks. She was like, you know, you really need to schedule some time for some self care, which I don't know how that's going to happen this weekend. We have plans with people that are here from out of state and stuff like that. But she's like, you really need to focus on checking in with yourself and seeing how you're feeling and not beating yourself up. And I mean, in some ways I'm happy that I didn't gain any weight especially given this last week while we've had Richard has had candy in the house from Halloween and just because he's been craving it. And so he has several bags of candy that are just kind of sitting out. And so that's not something I would normally have in the house to just grab whenever I feel like it. So I have been eating not a ton of candy, but just grabbing pieces here and there like that, you know, that adds up over time and it is just pure carbohydrates and sugar, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't even really ever taste as good as I think it's going to. It's just there, you know? In my mind, I think that it's something that I want and so I eat it and then afterwards I'm like, why did I eat that? It really just wasn't that great. I also haven't been preparing as much for a sweet treat like I normally do. Like I've just been relying on like enlightened ice cream bars and stuff like that. So it's a much smaller treat than when I make something for myself and it's not quite as satisfying. Obviously not as much protein, not as much fiber, not as much substance really. So I'm kind of left feeling unsatisfied and then that's when I get up and I go and I grab some more candy. I've definitely been over the morning fighting that feeling of trying to decode why I didn't lose more than eight tenths of a pound. I've also been trying to kind of take comfort in the other markers that I saw improve. Please hold, my dog is losing his mind in the backyard. Oh, my child. I am doing everything I can to try and feel good about where I'm at and what I accomplished. The fact that I didn't gain anything while not counting or weighing or being super meticulous about the way I'm putting it, recipes together, allowing myself to indulge in a few extra meals out. That in and of itself is a victory because in the past when I haven't been focusing on those things, I've definitely gained weight. So that's a win. And I'm probably going to be spending the next few days working through some things that that are a win aside from the weight because I'm more than a number on a scale. I think that as much as I was trying not to have any expectations of what would happen on the scale, I was still expecting to lose some more weight. And I think there's a part of me that is scared that the only way that I'm going to lose this weight is to be obsessive about it because that's the only time I've been able to lose weight is when I've been obsessive about it. And I don't want to be. It just feels like it shouldn't be this hard. I'm still struggling. I went down a spiral after I stepped on that scale last Friday. And I 
definitely went through some binging behavior last weekend. Not to the extent that I have in the past, but I definitely ate more than I should have. I ate an entire pint of ice cream Ben and Jerry's on Sunday, which is like classic Mindy binging behavior. And I felt terrible afterwards. Like it didn't even, halfway through the pint, it didn't even taste good, but I was like, nope, I'm finishing the whole thing because I don't want it to be in my house and I don't want to eat it later. So I went back into that mind, that mindset. It just felt like full on regression. I rebelled against the book. I stopped reading in my intuitive eating book. I'm just doing my best to remind myself that progress is never linear. I met with my dietitian earlier this week after, you know, the whole weekend and not feeling good. And she was like, Mindy, you don't understand how good it is that in pursuing intuitive eating, you not only didn't gain weight, but you lost almost a pound. Yes, it was just a pound in four weeks, but most people, when they start to pursue intuitive eating and start trying to learn how to repair that, and because the very first step is unconditional permission to eat. Like that's, that's the very first step is unconditional permission to eat because you have to undo what you've done to your brain. Basically the, the ingrained, you know, diet culture of, I can't have this thing at this time, or I can only have this thing at this time, or I can only have so much of this thing. Like that is what makes our brain work against us. It makes perfect sense that most people, when they're first starting this path, they would gain weight. And I, I not only did I not gain weight, but I, I was able to lose a little bit. I'm doing my best to hold on to that and to be happy about that and to realize that right now my focus can't be on weight loss. It can't be. I need to step away from that weight loss mindset and I need to step away from how much can I lose and how quickly can I lose? Because right now the important part is learning how to function with food in a way that's healthy, that's not obsessive or out of control because that's where I've lived. I've either lived in obsessive control or complete lack thereof. I need to learn how to live in the moderate. I know that this video has been kind of all over the place. I'm a little all over the place right now, but I wanted you guys to understand where I'm at and hopefully you'll be on board with me over the next, I'm sure several months as my focus becomes far more about how to focus more on being moderate than on losing the weight. I know I still need have weight that I need to lose but I feel like this piece is more important right now. My dietitian is totally on board with where I'm at. She's like, your health and your blood work is in a good enough place that it's totally fine for you to focus on those things. So if you're somebody who struggles with looking at the number on the scale and you have a hard time focusing on the positive when the scale is not doing what you want it to, or you've really been struggling with living in the moderate, like you're either in a state of total control or lack of it completely. I encourage you to take a look at the intuitive eating book, maybe gain an understanding of what's happening in your brain that's causing some of these behaviors because it has been a huge eye opener for me. And it's leading me on a whole other journey that I didn't even know I needed to be on. This has been a very rambly video and I really hope it's going to make sense when I edit it. If there was something that I said that resonated with you, or if you have had something significant that's happened in your own journey in regard to weighing yourself, intuitive eating, all of those things, please let us know down in the comments. I love to hear from you guys and about your journey and how things have been for you. And I will see you guys in the next one. We're on a journey. Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted But feels like we're learning To be better without what's been holding us back now